Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Point Blank uh, here at KTN News. We are filming from our INM headquarters here in Nairobi. Born on the 26th of October 1961, at 57, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta is the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. Last Monday, the Minister at the Treasury, Henry Rotich, and the PS, Dr. Thuge, recorded statements with the Director of Criminal Investigations. On Tuesday, they were arraigned in court with charges of abuse of public office, among other charges. Is this a defining moment for the Kenyatta presidency? On the morning of 22nd July 2019, the Director of Public Prosecution, Nordin Haji, dropped what could be the biggest bombshell to rock the Jubilee administration's seven-year tenure. The National Treasury entered into a facility contract in euros, while the commercial contracts were in U.S. dollars, therefore occasioning further loss to the Kenyan government through exchange rates. Of note, out of the Kenya shilling 63 billion in respect of the projects, as of January 2019, the government of Kenya has made the following payments. Advance payment, commitment fee, insurance and other costs totaling Kenya shillings 19 19 billion 714 366 991 euros 40 million approximately Kenya shillings 4.6 billion was borrowed in addition to the principal amount to pay interest in advance during the construction period which to date has not commenced as a country we continue to pay interest on the loan i don't know if you've understood this point we borrowed, the, the, the loan had interest. We borrowed more money to pay the interest, which also attracted interest. At the end of Haji's statement, Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rutich and his principal secretary, Dr. Kamau Thuge, were ushered into waiting vehicles and driven to the Directorate of Criminal Investigation Headquarters on Kiambu Road. Nine months prior, the Aror and Kimwarer Dam scandal broke. At its incredulous cracks was a claim that 21 billion Kenya shillings had been stolen and lost in what appears to be ghost projects. Then this. The government has lost 21 billion in Kimwarer and I don't know, Aror Dam, which is a flat lie. The money in question is about 7 billion. On Tuesday, 23rd July 2019, Rutich and Thuge, after spending the night in what is now the police station of choice, Muthaiga Police Station, they were driven to Milimani Law Courts at 6.30 a.m. After listening to the charges, Chief Magistrate Douglas Ogoti ruled. Accused 1. Henry Kiplagat Rutich and accused 2. Kamau Thuge, each to be released on a bond of Kenya shillings 50 million with one surety of similar amount, or a cash bill of Kenya shillings 15 million. It is expected in line with the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act and most significantly President Uhuru Kenyatta's pronouncement on April 4th, 2019 during his State of the Nation address to Parliament that anyone whose case goes before court will be removed from government and any individual will thereafter have to answer his case before a court of law. President Uhuru Kenyatta reshuffled his cabinet Wednesday afternoon, leaving out Rotich and Okuryotani takes over the Treasury Ministry in acting capacity. Good evening, welcome to Point Blank here at KTN News uh, from INM Towers. To dissect what this means politically and legally, uh, Point Blank sought uh, the Senate Minority Leader and Senior Counsel, uh, James Orengo, to take us through what is going on and the implications for government and those before the courts. Jim, karibu sana mwishimua. Asante sana. Please welcome to Point Blank. Thank you. Jim, is this a defining moment? Is this Uhuru's solemnic moment? I think, yes, it's a defining moment. It is a historical moment, although I don't think it's unparalleled. 
I think in other administrations during the first uh, Kenyatta government and subsequently in the Moi government, there were instances where ministers were arrested and charged for fraud and bribery. Uh, but uh, in terms of the extent to which the president has gone uh, to deal with corruption, uh, broadly and definitively, I think indeed this is uh, Jim, from a a Jim, from a historical perspective, uh, you attended uh, the president's uh, national State of the Nation address. Um, a lot of people accused him then of backing. Uh, do you think this is redemption? Yes, I think this is a redemption. I think people did not understand what he was trying to say, that uh, legal processes have to be followed. You can't uh, uh, get people arrested and just charge them as if you are taking them before a kangaroo court. And I think to that extent, a lot of people did not understand him well. But now what is happening, and from the statement which was made by the Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, it emerges that there is some serious work being done. Mwishimiwa, Jomo Kenyatta Uhuru's father faced um, the Mangare inquiry, uh, you know, the death of uh, J.M. Uh, Karaoke. Uh, retired President Moy uh, faced the Uko Commission. Um, in terms of historical magnitude, um, everyone is innocent, of course, uh, to, uh, you know, found to be guilty. But for this move, uh, where the head of the National Treasury, the custodian of public funds, uh, the president and his government make a move on them. Does this compare to those historical moments? I think it's a little bit better because if you remember on the Moangali inquiry, uh, there was never an arrest uh, that was made that ended up in a conviction in relation to the murder of J.M. Kariki. In regard to the Uko murder, uh, charges which I think were tampered charges were raised against certain individuals, in for, uh, including the former DC of Nakuru, Mr. Ngoka. But in this particular regard, I think the president has demonstrated that he will not stop at anything in dealing with this animal called corruption. What I was uh, a bit unhappy with at the beginning is that uh, it didn't look that serious investigations were being undertaken. What I heard from the court uh, when these people were presented uh, before uh, the magistrate, it was quite clear that uh, the prosecution was ready to go. They were ready. And uh, they didn't get into these uh, arguments about bail. I think they readily acceded to bail and uh, set out the terms, which to me, uh, looking at the seriousness of the charges, uh, were considerate. And to that extent, if they mean what they were saying today, that they are ready and they want the case to go on a day-to-day -day basis, then this may be really a defining moment. Uh, where in your heart as senior counsel, um, and without being on the prosecution side or that of the defense, just historically, the statement by Haji as DPP, uh, a preamble to the arrest, was a very deep telling statement. What was your take on his statement? What were your takeaways from Haji's statement? Uh, from the takeaway from the statements, I think he was fulfilling what he had promised, that these were very complicated investigations and needed uh, work to be done outside jurisdiction. You remember they went to the United States of America, to Italy, to Dubai, and I think the United Kingdom. Uh, and in making this statement, I think he demonstrated uh, that they were now quite prepared to prosecute the cases against the individuals and without uh, looking back in the sense that, you know, there were procedural issues which were still outstanding. So, Jim, I still want to look at the rear uh, view mirror with regard to the magnitude of the moment as, as I will come to the mechanics. I'm reminded, looking back in recent history, of how hard it must have been for retired President Moy uh, to do Charles Jonjo, the so-called um, inquiry, Jonjo inquiry. I'm saying this because Kenyatta worked at the Treasury and the uh, public record is clear that he worked with Rotich and Thuge very closely as minister. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, uh, right up where his, you know, his soul, his heart is. If, he, if, if Kenyatta had worked anywhere else <laughs> in government, the yeah. treasury was where he worked. Yes, you, you know, the, the comparison to Charles Njonjo, I think is different. Charles Njonjo, I think it was a political issue. You know, it was like, uh, 
uh, a season of long knives. President Moy was trying to cut anybody that was not uh, receptive to the ideas you know, that he was propagating at that one time. With the presidency being an absolute uh, institution in the democracy, if it, one may call it at that time. President Uhuru is trying to deal with a, a more significant problem, a more difficult problem. And I think he has come to the realization that uh, he, he has no friends and he has no enemies. I think that's the attitude he has at the moment. And uh, I remember one time when he said, you know, if it is me, just walk to Kiambu or near Karura Forest, go and record a statement. If it is anything you got against my brother, just do the same, same thing. So I don't think it mattered to him uh, that he had Jimmy, with... I want to go behind the doors uh, yes, with, yes. with you. You, you. You said to me on point blank that you had four hours with the president on yes, corruption. Yes. yes. Is, is this part of what you think is in his mind? I told you at the time when you interviewed me initially, I told you from that discussion, I was convinced that he was serious uh, what he meant about dealing with corruption. The only thing that I, uh, you know, I was not quite uh, with him at that time is dealing with grand corruption. I think so far, this is a first instance, a first pointer the president is now ready and prepared to deal with uh, grand corruption. And dealing with the treasury, because that's the nerve center of our financial system. And the accused is somebody who sits in cabinet in order of priority. I think we may put uh, some significance on the Minister for Interior, but I think for any system, politics apart, the treasury is the nerve center of every act activity that takes place in a nation. And the fact that he, he had worked in the Treasury and knew Rotich very well uh, would have been uh, issues that would have come up in his mind and uh, behave uh, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, towards uh, looking at these characters so, so in, more you, sympathetically. And you're talking about political seniority. Obviously, the Minister at the Treasury is the face of Kenya abroad. Yes. Uh, he's the tax collector in chief. Yes for whom taxes are collected. So it's a position of great consequence. It's so a position of great consequence. Sometimes I think really, you know, uh, when we appoint people into positions, uh, we don't think about those positions and what it entails. I think uh, when President Kenyatta was uh, formulating his cabinet in 2013 and 2017, I think they were answering to political demands and challenges. They didn't sit down and look at what was at stake in so far as Kenya was concerned. Uh, uh, and I think this, they, this, these prosecutions are beginning to see, uh, to show that the president, you know, has seen uh, the lost time yes. during the last six years. Jimmy, you you're more than two decades, uh, you know, uh, both at the National Assembly uh, looking at corruption, uh, either, uh, you know, when your party uh, were, were the official uh, watchdog when you look back at Goldenberg and you look back at agro uh, in terms of magnitude, this uh, dumb scandal, uh, the, the figures I'm hearing, 63 billion project, of which some 17 billion or thereabout, and I know the matter is before court, and therefore we can't get it. In terms of magnitude. I think this is huge, and we're still counting. And the related projects which uh, are going to attract the same kind of consequences. If you are looking at the whole sector about uh, the harvesting of rain and building dams, uh, you'll find that willy-nilly every project uh, that involved dams, uh, huge resources have been defrauded uh, by cartels within. Jim, two things caught my eye. Yes. First of all, the, the people who have been charged seem to come from one area yeah. uh, of the Rift Valley. And what seems to me, this was a project for their people. Yes. Uh, it, it's paradoxical when people say there was a tribal agenda, yet they're stealing from their may, own may, people. May I can tell you, on, uh, on, he, on issues of crime, let's put ethnicity and tribes aside. We are not going to be able to fight against corruption if at every time uh, somebody is arrested or charged, uh, you begin to talk about your tribe or community. Everybody comes from a tribe or a community. And I think if you look at this single case, you may come to that conclusion. But looking at the people who have been charged generally in the last one year, 
Uh, I think those who have suffered in terms, in terms of numbers, uh, communities who have uh, had people in very important positions in government. So, and, so, so, and, and therefore, so, so, so when be, you take responsibility... So, so, to, so to be clear, Jim, these projects were aimed to help yes. that area of Rift Valley. Yes. And it was them who have been robbed, yes. the, the people of that area. So uh, the reason I'm asking this question is, um, I've been accused and I'm often accused uh, when I'm in this program, that we are trying to uh, put corruption on the lap of the deputy president. And during the investigations uh, surrounding these uh, arrests uh, the other day, the deputy president in a church uh, service was very categoric that this was fake news, that there was no scandal mm -hmm. of dams. Mm -hmm. and, and Jim, I wonder if the principal deputy uh, to the president has that viewpoint. What is your comments on his comments? First of all, from the comments he made, he should have recorded a statement. Because in our prosecutorial system and the policies that it uh, entails, uh, the country and the prosecution and the defense are entitled to both inculpatory or exculpatory evidence. So that if the Deputy President Ruto had evidence to show that no money was lost, and particularly in his position of responsibility, I think he should have not waited for a statement to be, uh, 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 to be demanded from him. G he, sh he should have gone to record a statement. Jim, for Kenyans to know, he then went further yes. in that statement in charge and accused the director of criminal investigation of being used yes. in the scandal. How does that sit in terms of the principal assistant to the president yeah. uh, questioning the, 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 in, the investigative uh, institutions, which now the DPP says he has received a report and reviewed and found that there is evidence. Well, probably I may not uh, make much out of that because, you know, you, you've seen what has happened in the United States where the president is complaining about government institutions. But there are ways of dealing with it. Th that's the problem with the deputy president because the government has declared that they're dealing with this animal called corruption. Changes have been made in government to make sure that this campaign succeeds. And therefore, he should not be speaking from the sidelines. So he should be seen to be supporting those institutions that are dealing with this. So as we move on, yeah. your brother, a colleague at the Senate, has made very serious comments. Um, Senator Mokomen, the majority leader at the Senate, outside uh, the gates of the criminal department uh, offices, Kiabu Road, said that the arrests which were made were made because of succession politics of 2022, and uh, he has looked at the charge and is a charade. Mm. And I have seen today uh, on television that he's among the lawyers representing uh, Henry Rotich and other accused persons. Yes. Now, where in your heart strictly, uh, uh, you know, as a lawyer, and, uh, and, and I know you probably have another viewpoint outside the realms of the legal, I'm finding it, can a lawyer acting for a party turn uh, the case into a political theater outside the courtroom and then be able to wear gowns of law before a judge and expect that that case is being prosecuted within professional guidelines? No, one, uh, this is a very unique position and uh, I, I, I don't understand why he had to make those comments. But as the person who speaks for government, in the legislature, and particularly the Senate, uh, I would not want to be, I would not want to see a situation where the government spokesperson in an arm of government is uh, prepared uh, to willy-nilly rubbish the work that government institutions are doing. I think that's the first point. The second point, the complaints that he made. Uh, would have been very good material in the courtroom, if you ask me my view, uh, because uh, he would have then taken steps, because it, uh, what it means is that there's a malicious uh, prosecution, or there is a, a, a prosecution for an extraneous purpose, which he, he linked to the 22, 2022 elections. Now, that, that is a very, uh, these are material that can be placed before the court. So he was placing that material in the wrong forum. 
Uh, and probably this is uh, all that I can say about it because the matter is before the court. But if you are a prosecutor, you would bring that to the attention of the court? Uh, if, if, if I wanted to waste time, I think that the attitude that uh, Taib has taken, which I'm very happy about, is let's get, let's get the job done. He says things about uh, bail or procedural issues, we are going to minimize and upfront he accepted a lot of requests which were being made by the, by the defense. Let's get the job done. That attitude is what should come from the prosecution. He said uh, that he's willing for day-to-day -day ruling, that, they, that he wants the case, he doesn't want any adjournments, uh, yes. that this is a matter that can proceed, that he was really beaming with confidence. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and you know, um, Trump, within, uh, 18, within 18 months, if you count the number of people in his, in, his, in, his, in his camp who are working for him, who have ended up either being convicted on a plea bargain or who are now serving prison sentence, more complicated charges, uh, which was across jurisdictions, the offenses that some of these people are being charged. And they're really serving jail time. So in, in Kenya, it can be done. And my view normally is that uh, instead of going for too many cases with, two, uh, with, with very little resources, very few magistrates, uh, I would go for grand corruption. The most serious scourges in, uh, of a criminal nature, go for those and go for the highest offices. Because if you look at what happened in Korea, in Malaysia, in Singapore, they didn't waste time on, on small, small people. And the current prime minister, who is uh, over 90 years old after, after uh, election last year, you know, if you look at the record of prosecutions and the people he's aiming at, he's not dealing with watchmen or mid-level government officials. Much he's more. going for the top people. In my, the my brother Jim, uh, the director of public prosecution in his statement was categoric when uh, asked by the media about the principle of step aside. He said that in his view, the uh, positions held by senior government officials, uh, namely the minister, the PS, is not tenable for them to be minister while this case is going on. That read against the statement by the president during the um, State of the Nation. What does Orengo say? Uh, with regard I, I, to I, don't, I don't think he needed to make that statement, nor the president didn't make that statement, because this is an appointive in oppositions. A cabinet secretary under this system now uh, is not an elected official, like a parliamentarian. A uh, permanent secretary is not an elected official. And also they don't belong to independent commissions or offices. It's only regard, if you read the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, the only uh, offices that uh, are protected to some extent in terms of stepping aside and uh, retaining their positions until conviction and appeal are the elective uh, offices like governor uh, or somebody uh, who is occupying an independent office in the judicial service. So Jim, should they be in office? The law says they cannot be in office. And what is now the next step? Because as the, the, they have the, been charged the, 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 on the, Tuesday. The next step is that uh, when you have been charged, and that's happened to every ordinary public officer and state officers, is that you, are not you cannot report to the uh, place of work except to be uh, so that you're not deserted. You, you, you occasionally probably can report but you're not actively at work, and then you don't receive your full salary. Uh, you, normally you're at half salary. Jim, there has been um, uh, actually a bit of media writing about this, the behind the scenes cooperation, intergovernment cooperation between the government of Kenya and governments outside Kenya, um, that this was not only a multi-agency investigation, but it was actually uh, uh, multinational. Mm -hmm. uh, how does this, uh, uh, you know, reflect in future for Kenya uh, being able to hunt down people who loot? And, and I say this because of like the experience of Chicken Gate mm -hmm. uh, and, and how in the UK the perpetrators were jailed. Is this... Uh, no, the, the, the dimension lack of this is the most effective 
thing that is likely to happen. Uh, normally you can convict but not be able to trust you know, the proceeds of crime uh, uh, in respect of money laundering or, or money just being piloted out of jurisdiction. What is interesting about this, that if this trips to UK and uh, I don't know whether they went to the Isle of Man, the uh, Italy, would, would you, the Italy would you was very involved. Heaven, yes. Dubai. Yes. I think, the movements of money. I monies. think ultimately, if they were following the movement of money, then bigger people in the system may be in a, in a bigger trouble. Jim, without, um, I don't know how or you can or not discuss the prosecution strategy, but to what extent now will this evoke other agencies like the Asset Recovery Agency? Uh, the moment somebody is arranged in court, does that suspend uh, mm -hmm. every other agent, uh, agency from No, it doesn't, it doesn't. So, Mudoli Kemani and her. Yeah, yeah, she can move, uh, they can move simultaneously. And, and I think the asset recovery could be a, even a more effective tool because you can make, you can, you can get immediate results uh, of uh, freezing accounts, uh, making sure that the proceeds of crime are not used for other purposes or they don't, uh, they're, they're not spirited out of jurisdiction and it has the effect of you know making the movement of the pe people concerns very difficult so now, sometimes you know the government has got a lot of tools which you can use you know prosecution sometimes can take a lot of time because that's the way it works in any system where be people believe in democracy. Jim, wearing back your political heart mm -hmm. I want to ask Uhuru Kenyatta has said not my brother not my best friend not my closest ally is safe in the war against corruption. Nobody is safe, even my own brother. You are very close, a political ally, to retired Prime Minister Ray Laudinga. Uh, what is the position of, of the retired Prime Minister? What is, what, what, what is your side of the debate? Uh, where do you weigh in this move last week, uh, well, Tuesday? What are you, I'm sure you're, you're waiting for court actions, uh, but what, what, what is, where is he, where are you as a party? You know, let, let me tell you, um, a year ago, uh, or, and even up to six months ago, when people were uh, beginning to have, a, uh, you know, uh, difficulties whether this war was going to be, a, uh, you know, effective, you know, the Prime Minister kept on saying bigger things are coming. Uh, this is just uh, the beginning. Uh, I think he, he believes in this war against corruption and I think it is one of the things that made it possible for them to have the handshake. You know, remember before that he was talking about Eurobond and generally uh, about corruption in the system, NYS and all that. And uh, I can tell you I have the confidence that so long as he is working with Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, the fight against corruption is going to be more effective. Those who try to politicize the war on corruption would know that there are two major political formations uh, which are convinced that this is the route to follow and it must be followed. Are we going to expect a statement from ODM or from Raila? Obviously there are political ramifications yeah, yeah, to yeah. what has happened. You saw what happened to the stock exchange yesterday. Yeah. There was compandemonium mm -hmm. uh, after the arrest of the minister. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is this something I, under I, advisement? I, 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 think, I think that's going to settle. And, and probably, you know, either the government should make a statement in that regard that this is not going to have, affect the financial markets mm -hmm. or the financial system, or he can take action to, you know, build confidence uh, in, in stakeholders. Because there is a responsibility. And in, and in the market. I, I, for, ex I, for example, you know, the uh, Treasury, a lot of people have been arrested and charged. So there should be some action to show. Uh, that that is not going to affect the running of the Treasury, which is an important organ in, in government. Has Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta crossed the Rubicon with his army? Is Rome not safe? To discuss this and more, James Orango will be back. This is Point Blank. You're watching KTN News.